Okay. So where we're at is in the middle of discussing the difference between Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Yossi in terms of their view with respect to which part of the text of the Saita is included in the scroll that's later erased in the potion of water. And the choices are as follows. The verse reads, write these curses, 17a, uh, write these curses into a text. Okay, so there are two verses or a verse and a half in which the curse is explicit. So that definitely is included in the list. Then there is a curse that is implied from the blessing. The verse reads, if you have behaved and you're okay, then you won't be cursed, implying that if you didn't behave, you are cursed. So this is not an explicit curse. It's a curse that's inferred from a blessing. So is that also included? And then number three are the instructions. There's the verse that describes the instructions to the Koyan to administer the oath, as well as instruction to the woman to respond with Amen. So is that also included? Those are the three opinions. Is there an instruction by the Koyan? Instruction from the Torah given to the Koyan to administer oh, the okay. oath, or instruction to the okay. woman by Torah to say Amen. Those two instructions. Those are the three opinions. Just the explicit curse, the explicit curse and the curse inferred to from a blessing. And opinion three is to include the instruction as well. Like These are the three opinions. Yeah. And we came down to yesterday as we explained the precise language of the Torah. Because the Torah writes, if you're going to translate every single word literally, it would be like this. Write these the curses, the those mentioned above in a book. So a lot of the and these and those repeated. Specifically, you have the word alois, curses. Okay, that's the curses themselves. And you have the word s, the, and you have the hey, these, and you have the hey of ha'ela, which is again the, and then ela, those mentioned above. So you have like four extras. So one opinion was, okay, all these extra words are coming to include things. And thus, write the maximum you should, including the instructions. Another opinion was, no, the, the these are actually coming to exclude. So strip it bare of just the curse itself. And then you had the middle ground, which said, don't include the instruction. So we're somewhat exclusionary, but you should, should include the blessing that's inferred to by the curse. This is our mayor's view. So we had, one of these statements to be inclusive and one of them to be exclusive. And that's the Gamora's question now. Why is it that when it comes to the first, the, these, Rav Meir learns that to mean to include an extra line in addition to the curse itself. You should also include, Rav Meir, yeah? You should also include the curse that's inferred to from the blessing. Whereas when it comes to the other, the, these, he says that's to exclude, to exclude the instruction. So why is the same word in the same phrase, once being used to include and once being used to exclude? This is the Gemara's question we're about to address now. Yeah? Um, yeah, is clear or no? No. No? So, right, a mayor is the one who said that. The hybrid you said, not the hybrid, I say that. But that it's a hybrid, yes, middle because ground, middle ground. that's right. To include the curse itself, for sure. Yeah. And then because the verse says, the, these, giving you an added extra, thus he says to include the curse that's referred to from the blessing. That's number two. Right. Two. Right. But then because the verse later says, the, these, he says, therefore, you should exclude instructions. the instructions. So why is it that one time the, these is inclusive and then the, these exclusive? Be consistent. That's the real uh, issue. This is the issue that Gamora is about to deal with right now. On one side. That's right. The one that says to exclude everything in bare bones, okay. So he learns all the. That's right. He consistently reads all the words, the these, to be exclusive. The other one who says include everything reads all the the these to be inclusive. 
But then you have over here, a mayor goes halfway. In one case, he says, include the extra, include the curse and fruit by the blessing, but exclude the instruction. And both coming from the same word, from the word the, but either from the word the these before or the these after. But if they're right, because the verse reads, include the these curses, the those mentioned above. So the first the these comes to include, and the second the these mentioned above comes to exclude. Why is that? Okay, that's how he's interpreting it. It's correct. Okay, thank you. Following? Yeah. It's a little confusing, but I hope we got it. Okay. She says the Gemara like this. This is the Gemara's question we're about to ask. And that's what we're going to read here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's what they call a Gemara cup, right? Yeah, a Gemara brain. jumps in in the middle of, the, of, the, of this. Uh, of this conversation what are you saying yeah right is it, but the principle is that any letter or word in torah that torah didn't have to write must be teaching you something otherwise torah wouldn't have wrote it just you know if you can say less say less so if you're adding more then say so so at the bare minimum the torah could have written write the curses that's it you don't have to say the these and you don't have to say the those mentioned above those are all extra words, right? So it's either coming to tell you, right, the curse is only nothing else, and that's why it's repeating itself by saying dadis, or it's come to tell you, oh, there's more you got to write. But then you have a mayor who says it both ways. At one time, he says it means to exclude certain parts, and the other time, he says it means to include certain parts. So why is that? Following? Yeah, you had said that the, the actual translation is write these the curses, the those. That's right. So it seems like the first these doesn't have the article the, the, the uh, okay write there's these. right so these is that where is that the inclusive part the the, the one the, the that goes by the word curses that's, that's the, the part? no let's see a second that's the hold on a second right the first the comes to include and the, the these that follows after, or the those that follows after, that's the exclusive part. So there is a the these? The no, no, it's, it's, it's a right these, the curses. So that word the, 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 the after, the the after these, is, yeah. Is the inclusive part? That's the inclusive one. And then the other one, the those, is the exclusive one. Okay. And why is that? Sorry. Yeah, that, that's, it's actually important to remember that we get the answers. So that's good you brought that out. Okay, so let's see the question. In the Gemara, yeah? Virabi Meir, the line begins with the word Torah, and then it says Ha'ela, and it says Lamute, Tzavoy, Sekabalis, Virabi Meir. Last word in the line is Virabi, and the beginning of the next line is Meir. It's about the middle of the page. Last word in the line is Virabi, and then the next word, Meir. Yeah? Yeah, I see it. Virabi Meir and Rabbi Meir, Mem Shin stands for Maishna. What's the distinction? Hi, hey. This letter A, the word the, which precedes the word curses, ha alais, the curses. Why is it that that letter A, the word the, demarbi, bay, which through it you include, you include the curses that are referred to from the blessing, that they should also be written in the text. Umaishna, and what's the distinction? Hi, he, the other he, which follows the word curses, which is ha ela, the those mentioned above, where that letter A, demiit bay, it comes to excludes, exclude, and it excludes the instructions. So, all right? Well, are you following? Yeah, I follow. It's just funny when you hear that these does. It's like one of those jokes where you have to say, see, what is it? But the kids play these jokes, huh? She sells sea sells by the seashore. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Who's on first? That's, that's a Yeah. <laughs> So the Gemara says like this, contextually it makes sense. Hey, the Gabe, boy, boy. He. Hey, the Gabe, the Muta, Muta, he. That was like this. The letter hey that is attached to a word, which itself is coming to include, adds to the inclusion. The letter hey, which is attached to a word that itself excludes, is to exclude. So in other words, don't be consistent with the word the. The word the is only a prefix. 
it's a prefix to another word. So what does that other word do? So when it says, write these, the curses, the word curses, for which the letter hey, the is a prefix, what is that telling you to do? It's not telling you to leave things out. It's telling you to write something. It's telling you to write the actual curses. So then with the letter the added to that, then that letter the is, to, is also for, for curse, to include. Whereas the next line, which said, those mentioned above, that's coming to exclude those mentioned above and no others. So the hey that's attached to that is to exclude too. Following? The word, right, in Hebrew, the, well, even in English, the word does only is a prefix. The word does not a self-standing word. It, it, it follows something else. Yeah. The table, the car, right? It's coming to, it, it's a prefix. It seems to uh, limit. Well, well, let's see. It depends on what you're talking about. It depends what you're talking about. Okay, so that's the way the other people read it, that the word does coming to exclude. But the mayor is saying, put it in context. Because the, the word the is a prefix to a different word, so look at the other word. Is the other word an inclusive word? Then the word the, which is a prefix, is also inclusive. Oh, so it takes on the, the meaning or the character of the word that it's a prefix to. That, uh, follows it. That's correct. Because in, in, in English, it works too, because the word the is a prefix to whatever. But in Hebrew, it certainly work, certainly, because in the Hebrew, the word the isn't a self-standing word at all. It's just the letter hey attached it's to a, a word. It's a neutral thing until it's given definition correct. by the following word. Correct. It's a so neutral it's thing. Like, until it's given definition by that which it's followed by, because it's always a prefix, especially in Hebrew, where the word the isn't an actually self-standing word. It's the letter hey attached to a word. So look at the word itself. If that word is inclusive, then the letter hey, which is attached to it, is also inclusive. So when the first time around where it says, write these, the curses. So the word the here is followed by the word curses. The word curses is an instruction to do something, to include something on the text which is to write the actual curses. Then the word the there is to add something else to that instruction, namely add the curses that are referred to from the blessing. But the next one, which says, ha'ela, those mentioned above. When you say those mentioned above, that's an exclusive word. And therefore the the is also coming to exclude. And thus it excludes the instructions, as well as the instruction, as well as to exclude any other curses written in Torah anywhere else, namely in Deuteronomy. It's clear? This is the Gemara's answer. So we have three ways of going about this. One way of going about it is that all the words that these are exclusive, leaving with the bare bones. You have another view which says all the the these are coming to include, giving you the maximum of what you would write. And Amaris says, no, 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 don't make all of them the same, depending on where it's coming. If the the is a prefix to an inclusive word, then use it to include something. If the the is a prefix to an exclusive word, use it to exclude something. And thus you're stuck with it, and thus you're left with this hybrid. So the hey is the the in this case? The word hey, the letter hey is the word the. Okay. It's a prefix to a word, ha ela, right. or ha alois, uh -huh. right? But in English it works too, because even in English, though, even though the word the is a self-standing word in English, it's not, it, okay, the word the, mm -hmm. the word the never ends a sentence. You don't end the word, you don't end the sentence with the word the. That's a prefix. It, it's a prefix to something else. Right? Okay. The word those can end a sentence. Yeah. I don't like those. Because you're describing you're shot, precisely. So it could be the those, that's it's a it's a exactly. So the word those is exclusive. You're saying only those. And therefore the word the that precedes the those is also an exclusive statement. Whereas curses is an inclusive statement. And therefore the the that it precedes curses is also an inclusive statement. Based on an exclusive nature. Or inclusive, or depending inclusive, on the exactly. following word. Exactly. Okay. Now, here's the best part of all Gemara, for those who like this whole thing. So the Gemara is not going to disregard our entire discussion from the last two days, right? Because the Gemara is going to ask a question which tells us that this couldn't be the issue at hand for the following reason. The Gemara says, Ba'alesle l'rab meyer michlalab atashimayahim. Rabbi Meir, as a rule, does not learn inferences. Inferences specifically of, when I say no, it must therefore be yes. Right, so for example, this is an example right here. 
Torah says, if you are, if you behave, you're not going to be cursed. It's a negative statement, but you infer a yes statement, which is that if you did behave, if you didn't behave, you'll be, you will be cursed. Right? The verse says, yeah, if you, the woman, behaved, yeah, yeah. you will not be cursed. That's a negative statement. You will not be cursed if you behave. If, if you behave. So the inference is a positive statement. If you didn't behave, you are cursed. Right? That's an inference. And our mayor, as a rule, does not do such inferences. But because of the statement is meant in the negative, therefore must also imply the positive. The mayor is of the view, generally, that you don't do that. And the Torah only means what it says and not an inference. Where does he learn this from? Where do we know this from? There's a principle. So he hasn't used what inferences? Is that how you Specifically know? this inference. In Hebrew, it's mm-hmm. inferred from the negative, you know the positive. Okay. He does he disregards that way of, under, of reading text, of reading the scripture. You infer the positive. From a negative statement. Specifically, he's talking about the um, condition that Moshe Rabbein we set upon the tribe of Ruven and Gad and half of Manasseh, who asked to stay on the eastern side of the Jordan, right? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. the western side of the Jordan. No, the eastern side. No, the eastern side. They asked to stay on the west, eastern side of the Jordan. <clears throat> and Moshe said, no problem, but so long as you help. Right. Yeah. But Moshe Ben says it in a double. He says, you must go fight with your brothers, and then you can get your land. And if you don't fight with your brothers, you won't get your land. That's he doesn't use the inference. He doesn't use the inference either. there. Moshe Ben doesn't use the inference. He says it both ways. He says the explicit and then the inference too, the negative and the positive. And the mayor derives from there and says that because of this, therefore, any time you make a halachic condition, you must say it in both the positive and the negative. I'm sorry, when you make a negative? You make a condition in Torah. I vow to do X, Y on condition that such and such. So you have to say it in the negative and the positive. I vow to do this if X happens, and if X doesn't happen, I vow not. I won't do it. You have to say both in the negative and the positive. There are all kinds of rules as to how the wording is and what the wording is, but this is the general principle. So therefore, the Gemara says, if a mayor is of the view that you don't derive the negative from the positive, so why would a mayor say that you should include in the text the curse that's inferred to from the blessing? A mayor disregards the whole idea of negative and positive. The negative here, the the the, the negative here is. If you don't, if you didn't behave, you won't be cursed. The positive, therefore, is if you did misbehave, you are cursed. And a mayor says to include that text, the negative text, which says if you're not cursed, if you're not, if you didn't misbehave, you aren't cursed. The mayor says to include that into the script, into the text of written in the Saita, which itself is an inference of a positive from a negative. But doesn't a mayor, as a rule, disregard the notion of inferring positive from negative? This is the Gemara's question right now. Following? He's including a, a positive from a negative? Yeah, because he's saying that on the text, the verse says to write the curses, right? Yeah. Which curses? So there's the actual curses. But Hermes says, in addition to the actual curses, you also should write the verse which says the, impl- the implication right. that the if you didn't, that's right, that if you didn't, if you didn't misbehave, you won't be cursed. He says to include that also because that infers a, a curse. But doesn't Amir disregard the whole notion of, of inferences? So why would he include that part of the text? Clear? Is he, is he, uh, is it bilateral with him? Is it both positive from negative and negative from positive? Seems so. Okay. Seems so. Okay, okay so the Gemara answers like this. So actually, I, I, I take back what I said earlier the Gemara is disregarding everything we said till now. It's not, it's adding a nuance. So the Gemara tells us like this. Um, Amr Rabbi Tanukhan explains. Oh, sorry, can I just say? Yeah. Uh, just to clarify, um, so the Gemara is just saying, well, this is all well and good, except that uh, this doesn't seem to be consistent with Rabbi Meir's line of reason. That's correct, correct. The so mayor, that's right. challenging it based on that. May, maybe it was someone else who said it, or, or, or no, maybe not, but it's saying it couldn't, this is not his line of reason. Yes, that's so, right. So even if a mayor uses this letter, hey, to include other statements, but as a rule, he doesn't include, as a rule, he does not derive positives from negative. So the fact that the Torah says, if you behaved, you aren't cursed, 
stops there. Just don't infer from there, according to Mayor's line of reasoning, that if you misbehave, you are cursed. And thus, that statement does not include a curse. Why is it written in his text? When Terry says to just write the text of the curses. Mm -hmm. All right. Her brain's not twisted too much yet. Okay, so Samar says like this. Amr Abtanachim, Abtanachim teaches. There's a bit of a play on words. The word used in Hebrew. Play on words. That's right. <laughs> the, word, the word used in Hebrew to say if you behaved is hinaki, which literally means if you are clean. Talking to the woman. Hinaki. The, the, the verse itself is in Numbers, uh, what is it? The uh, Midbar chapter, what was it? Chapter five, I think it was. Yeah, chapter five, verse. Um, yeah, verse, verse 19. It says like this. Then Tisa, if you did not stray tuma with any impurity, tachas ishech while you were married to your husband, meaning you didn't misbehave, he naki, you will be cleansed, from these bitter cursed waters. You will be cleansed. Or you'll be absolved, as they translated here in the Chabad.org translation, from these cursed waters, from these bitter cursed waters. Is there a word, that? Anochi, that's I. So the Aleph and Achaf, similar sounding word. Anochi. So no, but here it's He Noki. He oh. Nun Kaf Yud. He Noki. Yeah, which means you will be cleansed of this water. Okay. Now, this word He Noki should have or could have been spelled with an extra yud. Hey, because it's the word, the first letter is he, which is the letter hey, with a chirik under it, the dot, which says he, it could have been with a yud afterward. Hey yud, he, nun kof yud, naki. But it doesn't have that yud. It just says he naki, leaving it to the reader to know the vowel to pronounce it as he naki. Now, follow with me. Yeah, I think so. so now, the Gemara says like this. The reason why the Torah left that letter yud out, because the Torah wants you to read this word hinoki also as a hinoki, with a ches. And hinoki means you'll be choked. What? Choked. Choked? Choked. And there's the curse. Even though the verse is stating that if you didn't misbehave, you'll be cleansed from the water. But that word cleansed also has an allusion to choked. And thus, there's like a an hidden, an it's, it's, it's not an implied curse, it's a hidden layer curse. Hidden, hidden, in, hidden layer curse. Hidden in the word, That's right. Which literally means, means cleansed. Or absolved from the water, cleansed or absolved from the water. But there's that little. That's right. Subtle. Like you're not. Yeah, That's right. Patient. That's right. Well. This is how Rashim stands to Gemara. Yeah. So this is how Rashi tells us to read the text. Mean, uh, so the literal, the literal translation would be like this. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't, okay, let's read the whole verse. The Kayan will administer an oath for her. The Kayan will tell the woman. If no man lay with you, then and if you didn't stray, Tuma to impurity, tachas ishech instead of your husband. Himnaki, you are cleansed. That word himnaki. Mimei hamarim from the bitter waters. Hamarim ma'ila these cursed waters. Okay. Now this is how we translate it with the word himnaki choked rather than himnaki cleansed. Read it again. Vishbia oisa koyin. The koyin will administer the oath for her. Ba'amar ala isha and he'll tell the woman. Imloy shachav ish oisach. If you did not lie with another man. And if you didn't stray, tuma, uh, sorry, vim And if you didn't stray, comma or period, then you're fine. But tuma, if there was impurity, tachas ishech instead of your husband, chinoki, you will be choked. from these bitter waters. No, but if you change the word hinoki, which means and cleansed, and put the chinoki and cursed, you can put the comma earlier differently. So the comma usually is. If you didn't stray with impurity, instead of your husband, you'll be cleansed. Or you could say, if you didn't stray, period. 
But if you were impure because, instead of your husband, then you are then you are choked. Putting the comma differently. Follow? So I'll read it again. I'll read it again. Why don't they see the <laughs> Then where would the fun be? So again, let's read it again. So one way is the simple reading is if you did if you did not stray to impurity under your husband, you'll be cleansed. He knocking with the hay. Then, right, there's the word. If you didn't stray with impurity, is that one sentence, or do you put a stop between the word stray and impurity? So if you don't put a stop, it's if you didn't stray with impurity, you're cleansed. Or you could say, and if you didn't stray, period, end of statement. If there's in, but impurity, the word tumma, not connected to the word that you didn't stray with impurity, but you didn't stray, period. But instead of not straying, you actually were impure. Then, chinoki, you choked. Following? So there is not an implied curse, but a double meaning, like a, another layer of reading that isn't curse. And thus, our mayor says, include the line there, not because it implies from a negative to a positive, but because the very text itself could be read as a curse. And thus, it's included. Okay, so this really concludes our discussion on what is written in the text that goes mixed into the water. And tomorrow, the Gemara is going to go on a small tangent, not so long, a small one, and it's going to talk about uh, blessing in marriage, how to achieve blessing in marriage, how to invite God into our marriage, and talk about humility. We're going to talk a little bit about Avramavinu, which is appropriate because we're coming towards talk. We're, we're at Noyach, but still, Avramavinu is coming up. And then we're going to talk about tefillin. All kinds of beautiful things are coming up. So the, the, the mind-twisting part of trying to understand the halacha, we've concluded that today. So you made it here. Your Gemara rewards you with some inspiration tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like it would start. So it seems like it started in the stomach and would go up to the to the mouth, up to choke, up to the lungs. So it sounds seems like start in the stomach and up to the throat. So it seems like I'm not sure what kind of sickness that is exactly, but. Just, uh, the Gemara discussed it earlier. Which one's it? Like an explosive type of right. Yeah. Curse. But the Gemara discussed it. Sort of Didn't we have this discussion that the way the water enters, it goes from the throat first, meant the stomach, but the way the curse works, it goes from the stomach up to the mouth, yeah, up to the throat. We had that discussion, right. it, and that changes the wording because it goes down, but then the curse comes up. Or it doesn't work at all. We discussed that too, right? Yeah. If she has some sort of merit, or if, uh, or if she right. didn't misbehave at all. It's transformed, right? Becomes a curse, becomes a blessing. We'll talk about that also, God willing, tomorrow as well. Okay. So, God willing, some inspiration from the Gemara coming tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. And be stuck through this. Be a little taste of what it's like to, uh, of what people argue about in Yeshiva. Okay. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Yeah.